All right, thanks, guys. The Eagles take on the Giants, 820 East this Thursday. The Eagles were 2.5, now minus 3.5, totals 45 even. The Birds are the $1.55 favorites on the money line. That's a 10-cent move toward Philadelphia. The Eagles come into Thursday's matchup as one of the worst covering teams in the league. 1-4 ATS in their last five contests. The Eagles are also 0-2 covering away from home and find themselves allowing nearly 300 yards of passing per game. Now the Birds have failed to cover over the likes of Tampa, Indy, Tennessee, and Minnesota. They're also banged up with Sproles, Nada, Barnett, and Sidney Jones all questionable on the short week. They're taking on a giant squad who successfully covered the number in two out of their last three. And despite all the drama in the Big Apple, the G-Men garnered themselves marquee covers over the likes of Houston and Carolina. Now, total-wise, lots of overs when these two squads get together, 7-3 and three to the over in their last 10 meetings over the past couple of seasons. And despite dropping three out of five straight up, this Eagles team is still gaining 111 yards per game on average on the ground. The Eagles are 2-0 to the over in their road games for the year, while also going 5-0 and to the over in their last five away from home, dating back to last season. Meanwhile, the Giants on their side of things, two out of their last three got over the total themselves. They've also amassed 302 yards passing per game on average in their last 10 meetings with the Eagles. Now, weather could be a factor this Thursday, chance of a thunderstorm by kickoff, but if the weather stays comfortable, I really think this one could get over the total. So with all that said and done, I'm going to go ahead and purchase the hook, buy it up, and take the New York football Giants plus four and the over. 45 points in this one. And with that said, I just want to welcome you to the show. I got some lines and personalines out for NFL Week 6, and that's going to be our slate of early games. But before we get into that, I just want to remind you to check out my daily best play at patreon.com slash Brock Page. And with a documented win percentage of 70% for my last 10 underdog plays on that website, you're costing yourself valuable information each and every day you're not subscribed. Memberships begin at just $1.99 per month. There's also plenty of free content there as well. So once again, please feel free to hit that pause button right now. Open up your browser and just quickly check me out at patreon.com slash Brock Page. It'll only take you a few seconds. Link is in the description section below. And if you are a current patron of mine and you're watching this program right now, I simply cannot thank you enough. You make it all worth it. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at our NFL Week 6 slate of early games and personal leans. All starts Eastern Standard Time. And on deck, we've got Steelers, Bengals, 1 o'clock Cincinnati. The Bengals are the 2.5 point favorites. Uh, totals at 54. The Bengals are 4-1 and one against the spread so far in the season. 4-1 and one straight up in the outright game as well. Since he's putting up 31 points a game on average with marquee covers over Indy, Baltimore, Atlanta, and Miami. Since he's gone 5-1 ATS in their last six at home, dating back to last season, 2-0 ATS in their couple of home games this year as well. They're taking on a Pittsburgh team who's giving up 27 points a game, 296 through the air, and 105 yards a game on the ground. Pittsburgh also failed to cover in three out of their five games thus far in the season and are just 3-9 and nine ATS in their last 12 games, dating back the last year. Now, total-wise, both teams are 4-1 and one to the over. The total's also gone over in six out of Pittsburgh's last seven ball games. Pittsburgh's also 2-0 and oh to the over in their couple of games away from Heinz Field. So with all that said and done, I think this might be the spot where Cincy starts to pull away a little bit from the division. Give me the Cincinnati Bengals, minus two after buying the hook, and the over. 54 points in this one. Next game, Seahawks Raiders, 1 o'clock London. The Seahawks are the 2.5 point favorites. Total was 47.5 up to 48. Seattle 6 and 3 straight up in their last nine games away from home. And as bad as they've looked in certain spots this season, they're still putting up 122 yards on the ground per game. And they're holding their opponents to just 226 passing. Now, Oakland on the other side. Really having a rough go of things, dropping four out of their first five and going just two and three ATS in the process. The Raiders are 0-3 straight up away from home this season 
and failed to cover in two out of those three ball games. Just keep in mind that even though Oakland's technically the home team in this matchup here, just remember this game is being played in London. Now, total-wise, both teams are 3-2 and two to the under thus far on the season. Two out of both teams, three games away from home, stayed under the total. Oakland's gone 10-2 and two to the under in their last dozen games, dating back to last year. Seattle's also gone 7-2 and two to the under in their last nine games when traveling as well. So with all that said and done, I'm not so sure we're going to see fireworks in New Tottenham Stadium, but I think we'll probably see a Seahawks victory. Give me the Seattle Seahawks minus two after buying the half a point in the under 48 points in this one. All right, next game, Colts, Jets, one o'clock, New York. The Jets are the two and a half point favorites in this one. Total open 45 and a half up to 46 flat. The Jets are just two and three on the season, two and three against the spread as well. They failed to cover against Miami, Cleveland, and Jacksonville. They also failed to cover in five out of their last seven, dating back to last season. They are taking on an indie squad who's covered two out of their last four. And as bad as their record indicates, the Colts are actually throwing for 283 a game and averaging 24 points per contest on offense. And historically, the Colts have played these Jets pretty well in the past couple of decades, 12 and 5 straight up in their last 17 on the road in the Meadowlands. Now, total wise, these two teams historically go over the total when they get together, 7 and 3 to the over in their last 10 meetings. Indies 2 and 0 to the over in their past couple of ball games. Same goes for the Jets. New York's also gone five and two to the over in their last seven at home. In addition to that, they're also four and one to the over in their last five playing at home against Indy. Meanwhile, on the cold side, six and two to the over in their last eight taking on New York. And like I stated just a few short seconds ago, four out of their last five went over the line in the Meadowlands. So with all that said and done, we should have ourselves a pretty fun one in New Jersey this Sunday. I got a side with the veteran QB catching the points. Give me the Colts plus three after buying the half a point in the over. 46 total points in this one. Next game, Buccaneers-Falcons, 1 o'clock Atlanta. The Falcons were minus 4, down to minus 3.5. Total open 57.5, up to 58. Atlanta does come into this Sunday's matchup, scoring 27 points a game with 304 through the air on average. And as bad as Atlanta's record shows, three out of their four losses were just one-score losses. Atlanta 6 and 4 straight up with Tampa in their last 10, 13 and 6 in their last 19, 7 and 3 straight up in their last 10 at home against the Bucks. Meanwhile, on the Tampa side of things, they're going to commit to a rusty, immature Jameis Winston this Sunday. Therefore, most of their offensive stats and trends are null and void. Now, total-wise, this Tampa defense is giving up a rotund 35 points a game. That said though, we're seeing a completely different look from the Bucks, starting a guy who missed the first four games of the season. Now, on the other side, Atlanta is 8-4 to the under in their last 12 games, dating back to last year. Both teams are coming off of dismal offensive performances. Atlanta scoring just 17 yesterday, while Tampa put up only 10 against the Bears two weeks ago behind Fitzpatrick. So with all that said and done, I think the Falcons just match up better despite their 1-4 and four record. Give me the Atlanta Falcons minus 3 after buying the half a point and the under 58 total points in this one. Next game, Cardinals at the Vikings, 1 o'clock Minnesota. The Vikings are the 10.5 point favorites, totals 43. The Vikings are just 2-3 and three against the spread for the season, 1-3 and three ATS in their last four. Minnesota failed to cover against the Rams, Bills, and Packers. They're also just 2-6 and six ATS in their last eight, dating back to last season. They are taking on an Arizona team who, despite dropping four out of their first five outright, they actually find themselves one of the better covering teams in the league. Right now, Arizona's 3-0 against the spread in their last three. And their winners out of five out of their last seven against the spread dating back to the end of last year. Now, total-wise, the total has stayed under in four out of Arizona's last five. The cards are also 6-3 and three to the under in their last nine away from home. So far, the Cardinals are 4-1 and one to the under in their five games thus far in the season. Meanwhile, on the Minnesota side, two out of their last three stayed under the total as well. They're 3-2 and two to the under so far on the year in total. 
The Vikings are also 2-0 to the under in their couple of home games this season. Meanwhile, five out of their last six home games all stayed under the total as well. So with all that said and done, I really am counting on the Vikings laying another egg at home against an inferior team. I'm going to commit to the underdogs in this one. I'm going to purchase the hook, buy it up, and take the Arizona Cardinals plus 11 and the under 46 total points in this one. Next game, Bills, Texans, 1 o'clock Houston. The Texans open 8.5 eight, uh, eight all the way up to the 10-point favorites in this matchup here already. No total posted as of yet. The Bills, unsuc- uh, I'm sorry, the Bills successfully covered the number in two out of their last three. Marquee covers over Minnesota and Tennessee. The Bills have also established a fairly decent ground game. They're averaging about 100 yards a game on the ground. They're taking on a Houston team who has been a bit porous on the defensive side of things so far in the season 25 points a game on average 270 through the air nearly 100 yards on the ground they're giving up as well Houston's just one in four ATS for the year and has failed to cover over the likes of New England Tennessee the Giants and Dallas the Texans are just one in nine ATS in their last 10 dating back to last year dropping five out of their last six against the spread at home Now, total-wise, we once again do not have an opening line posted in that department, but when we do, just keep in mind that Houston's 4-2 to the under in their last six at NRG Stadium. They're also 5-2 to the under in their last seven, taking on Buffalo. Meanwhile, on the other side, Buffalo went 3-0 to the under in their last trio of games. They're scoring just 12 points a game on average while also going 2-1 to the under in their three games away from home this year. So with all that said and done, this one could end up being a lot closer than people think. I really do like the Bills to make it competitive. So with all that said and done, give me the Buffalo Bills plus 10. And I will also lean toward the under if that opening line isn't too egregiously low. All right, next game, Panthers-Redskins, 1 o'clock Washington. The Redskins are the one-and-a-half point favorite in this one. No total posted as of yet. But despite being the favorite, the Skins did lose to an indie team who's been lackluster to say the least. The Skins also notoriously struggle against the Panthers. Just one and four ATS in their last five against the Panthers. Winless in their last five meetings in the outright game as well. The Skins have also failed to cover in five out of their last seven meetings with the Panthers in Landover. And speaking of Carolina, 3-1 and one so far on the year, 26 points a game on offense and a punishing 154 yards per game on average on the ground. Carolina's 8-4 and four ATS in their last dozen road games, 5-0 and oh straight up in their last five with Washington. Now total-wise, lots of overs for this Panthers team, 3-1 and one to the over so far on the season. And once again, 26 points a game on average they're scoring. The Panthers are also 4-1 and one to the over in their last five on the road. Washington also went over the total of 46 points a week ago against Green Bay. So with all that said and done, we could potentially have a fun one in the nation's capital. I like the Panthers to get it done. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the Carolina Panthers plus two after buying the hook and most likely the over if that line opens up within reason. All right, next game, that is going to be Bears-Dolphins, 1 o'clock Miami. The Bears open three, now the three-and-a-half point favorites on the road. Totals 45, uh, I'm sorry, 44-and-a-half. Miami's gone three and two against the spread so far in the year. Covers over the Titans, Jets, and Raiders. The Dolphins are also 2-0 and against the spread in their couple of games at the Hard Rock. Miami's 4-1 and ATS in their last five at home. 4-1 and straight up in that very same category. They are taking on a Chicago team who did fail to cover against the Cardinals just two short weeks ago. And as good as the Bears have been, they haven't historically traveled well in their past couple of seasons. Just 3-15 and 15 straight up in their last 18 away from Soldier Field. Now, total-wise, I'm personally not expecting an offensive clinic in this one. Two out of Chicago's last three stayed under the total. They're 5-2 and two to the under in their last seven away from home. Meanwhile, on the Miami side, they're averaging less than 20 points a game on offense and just 192 yards through the air passing. Now the Finns are 3-2 and two to the under thus far in the season and 6-2 and two to the under in their last eight games against the Bears. So with all that said and done, I feel like points in this matchup here will definitely come 
at a premium in this one. I do like the Dolphins to at least cover at home. Give me the underdog Dolphins plus four after buying the half a point and the under 44 and a half points in this one. Next and final game for the show, it is going to be Chargers Browns, one o'clock Cleveland. The LA Chargers are the one and a half point favorites in this one, totals 46 even. But despite being the favorite on the road, this Chargers team has failed to cover in three out of their five ball games thus far in the season. They're also banged up on offense with Okung and Barksdale questionable with lower body injuries. The Chargers have failed to cover in two out of their last three and have losses against the spread to KC, the Rams, and the Niners. The Chargers are also 0-5 ATS in their last five games, taking on the Browns. And speaking of the Browns, 2-2-1 on the season, 4-1 ATS in their last five. Marquee covers over Pittsburgh, New Orleans, Jets, and Baltimore. The Browns are also a perfect 3-0 against the spread in their trio of games at home. They've also done fairly well against the number in recent years, taking on the Chargers. 4-2 ATS in their last six, playing at home against LA. One thing to note is this Cleveland running game. They're averaging 145 yards per game on the ground. Now, total-wise, I'm not expecting a whole lot of it in this one. Two out of Cleveland's last three home games stayed under the total. Meanwhile, on the Chargers side, 11 out of LA's last 16 stayed under the total, dating back to last season. LA's also 6-2 and two to the under in their last eight games away from home. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another low-scoring affair in Cleveland. That said, I'm finally... Backing the Browns after three years. I think this might be the first or second time. So give me the Cleveland Browns plus two after buying the half a point in the under. 46 total points in this one. All right, folks, that is going to do it for me. But before I get out of here, I just have to remind you to check out my daily best play at patreon.com slash Brock Page. And with a documented win percentage of 70% for my last 10 underdog plays on that website, you're costing yourself valuable information each and every day you're not subscribed. Memberships begin at just $1.99 a month. There's also plenty of free content there as well. So once again, please feel free to hit that pause button right now. Open up your browser and just quickly check me out at patreon.com slash Brock Page. It'll only take a few seconds. The link is in the description section below. And if you are a current patron of mine and you're watching this program right now, I simply cannot thank you enough. You definitely make it all worth it. And as always, thank you for watching today's program. I hope you enjoyed all this great free information. And please don't forget to check out my daily best play at patreon.com slash Brock Page.